Thanks for stopping by. This is Dan Bell of Bell Certified. This is an introductory discussion to topic one of the Priority Law course at Bell Certified. It's intended only to give you some working ideas uh, about this topic uh, before you launch into the course materials, which include uh, reading and uh, examples and a quiz at the end. And so it's not intended to describe all aspects of this law and its nuances, only to give you some, some general ideas up front of what this is about, this topic, before you launch into the reading materials. So there is, uh, as an analyst, as a patent analyst, uh, your lawyer will give you what I'll call a target. which could be a, uh, an application or a patent, an application for patent or a issued patent. And this, of course, is in the U.S. We're studying U.S. law today. And this target they has at the back um, claims. Claim one, two. And what the lawyer needs you to do is to find what they lawyers call prior art or a reference I'll label it that's before a, a certain uh, date and what priority law is about is figuring out the law at determining what these dates are and that's what we're will be discussing uh, throughout the priority law course and um, 102A is concerned with uh, the invention date. So this target patent under 102A um, has an invention date. So there's two claims here, claim one and claim two. It's feasible that they could have different invention dates. You could imagine where uh, a claim has, uh, think of a chair, uh, where the where the stool of the chair with the three legs is invented in January, and then uh, the fellow the inventor is sitting home uh, in February. They haven't filed their patent application yet, but they think up, hey, I'd like to lean back. So now they invent a a back on the stool, and they draw the diagrams. And then a few days later, they uh, maybe they um, they invent uh, armrests. So you could you could have uh, you could have um, uh, different invention dates. Similarly, in a target patent, you can have more than one inventor. Um, inventor 1, Inventor 2. So uh, maybe Inventor 1, uh, in this example, invented the, uh, the stool. They work together at a company. They sit across the hall from each other. Their job is, is designing uh, furniture. Um, and uh, they, uh, Venner 1 goes over and shares it with Venner 2. They talk about it. They brainstorm a little bit. And the, t and the two of them think, hey, what, what, if, uh, what if we uh, uh, put a back on this thing? And so the two of them come up with uh, um, another claim that includes a stool with a back on it. And then, um, and then uh, another inventor, they, they share it with another designer there at the company. And, 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 the, and the three of them then together design um armrests on that uh st on that chair with um a back and and so you you could have um uh in that case we're we're talking about three inventors and th and three claims um if i get this thing to work there we go so you got three inv three inventors and three claims now um so when we talk about the invention with 102a the invention was what we're saying is a claim. Each each of these um, claims ha may have a different date and and or a different inventor uh, to them. Um, we'll talk about uh, you know in, in later courses some of the law behind common inventorship and and uh, whether or not uh, they should have been in the same invention uh, application in the first place and that sort of thing. Uh, but th that's a fairly common uh, situation where you have a complicated product uh, with multiple inventors. 
with different dates and claims and, and you know you might have claim inventor one and two is inventor of claim one and inventor uh, two and three are inventors on claim two and then inventors one two and three are the inventor on claim three and since they're similar technology uh, uh, the lawyers decided to put it in the same application and list all the inventors. Um, that said, each of these inventions might have a different date. And so the reference, uh, so when, when we look at the statute, it says a person shall be entitled to a patent unless the invention was known or used by others in this country. So, um, so once this patent issues and the lawyer brings it to you and says, I need you to do an invalidity study, what the lawyer is saying is, I want you to find some prior art that teaches each and every element of the claim. Now, they may come to you and just say, oh, we're only interested in claim one, because that's the one that we're concerned about. These other claims, we don't think our, our product uh, is uh, um, embodying. Our product's not operating like claim two or three, only claim one. Or they may ask you to do all the claims. Um, and so... Uh, they'll be asking for prior art. Now, you might find a single reference that teaches all three of the claims, right? And, um, or you might find uh, one reference teaches claim one, another reference teaches claim two, and a third reference teaches claim three. So there's no requirement that the same reference teach all the claims. So an invention is a single claim, and and you, they're entitled to a patent, a patent unless... Uh, the, the invention, in other words, that claim is known or used by others in this country, which is the U.S., or if that claim was patented or described in a printed publication um, in this or a foreign country, anywhere in the world. So if that, if that claim one is described in a patent or any kind of uh, printed publication anywhere in the world, uh, then you found prior art that they can use to invalidate that claim. Now, but what does the date have to be of that prior art? The date has to be before the invention, right? Now, we talked about that this patent has a, a filing date on the front of it. All patents have a filing date. And indeed, later we'll talk about patents that claim priority to earlier patents. And, and some of these claims could have dates that even predate this filing date if this this target claims priority to earlier applications. Uh, we'll set that aside for today. We'll get into that more later. But, um, but the patent itself has a, it itself was filed on a certain date, and and that is um, not the same as the invention date, right? I mean, uh, it could have been invented three months before the filed the filing of the patent. It could have been invented six months. In fact, it could have been invented five years before the date the patent application was filed. And the problem is, is that the, the, the patent application has a date on it, and it doesn't say anything about when it was invented. And the only person who knows it, uh, that, um, that information, is the owner of the patent, right? So what is the stance here, if you think about who the parties are? Um, the lawyer you're working for was presented this patent that was owned by another company and that company is likely saying to your lawyer we would like you to license this patent we think that your technology is close to it and that we'd like you to give us a license uh, I'm sorry we'd like to license you to use our our patent and so the the basically that means that that this company that owns the patent wants money from 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 your lawyer's client and so th that's why the lawyer wants to invalidate it. They want to they want to find prior art that, that proves that what that claim one was not an invention because before the invention date there was this reference out there that taught each and every element of the claim. It and um, if they can find if you can find that reference, then they'll be able to go to the licensing meeting or or to call them up on the phone and say. The only one we were concerned about is claim one. That they probably actually wouldn't say that, but uh, you know we've re we've researched your your target uh, patent, uh, and we uh, we're not going to pay you licensing fees because we're not uh, a a we don't think we're infringing uh, if that's true, and and b we found this reference out there that teaches each and every element of your claim, and um, therefore we don't think your 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 uh, patent's even valid. And so that's what invalidity in, in analysis is about. Um, so um, now, what's the what the problem f 
for the lawyer is what he does, he want, he doesn't know what date to give you right because when when he gets the patent from the uh, from the other company all it has on it is a filing date and it's unlikely that if he says to that party hey what's the day of invention what's the invention date what's the day of invention they're probably not going to tell him and and in fact I, I'm as far as I know not many lawyers ask that question um, they mainly they just they research the patent uh, and they try to find prior art and um, uh, and they kind of do it in in the blind they don't ask that question so so when you're doing a search what date do you search on now, now there is something called um, constructive reduction to practice which we'll talk about later in this course um, but often lawyers if they're if they're interested in 102 a art they're going to ask you to just go ahead and use the filing date or they might say three months before the filing date or six months or it's got to be at least nine months they're they're all different um, uh, so you need to ask the lawyer that but if they don't tell you um, what date to use hopefully you can ask them hey do you want 102 a art at all or do, or you want do you want only uh, 102 B art so today we're not talking about 102 B uh, but uh, I'm going to mention it just briefly um, 102 B art is what they call a statutory bar uh, and the, the reason it's a statutory bar is that if you can find a 102 B reference the patents invalid this target patent is invalid period you don't need to figure out when the invention date is and so uh, and now what is that uh, the 102 B is not you know based on the invention date it's based on the filing date so so since we know the filing date if we can find a reference that's a year and a day uh, before this filing date here then it's a statutory bar and we'll talk about that when we get to 102 B um, but some attorneys will ju will say, "Hey, just get me the 102B references." Now, there's a, now even if you're uh, paranoid of, of of going to a meeting with only a, a with only a 102A reference that's before, say, three or six months before the um, filing date, and, and with an unknown in, uh, day of invention, um, there could be some benefits to that in litigation. It could lead you to other information about what was happening in the technology, uh, the state of the art. Um, and and a lot and as a defendant in litigation, you're able to uh, meet uh, and ask questions and write letters uh, in a process called discovery, uh, and get people to uh, admit information they know about uh, what was happening in the state of the art, whether it's the person who owns the patent and others. And uh, so sometimes a 102A reference, although it might not turn out to be prior art because it's not actually uh, before the day of invention, it may be useful in in um, acquiring other information that does invalidate the patent. So uh, many lawyers do allow and, and do want to see the 102A art in addition to the 102B uh, art. Um, so th those are the, ma the main ideas about 102A. Um, it, it works on a claim by claim basis. For each claim that they s tell you, they want to find uh, something that's before the day of invention the the presumed day of invention is is the filing date uh, absent any other information it has to be before the filing date uh, although that's almost never uh, going to be um, enough uh, it, it's possible it would be uh, but almost never is it enough and, and thus you'll need preferably you find something that's you know three to nine months uh, before the filing date or or even a year plus which would qualify under 102B. So, but it's going to depend on the lawyer uh, who's working on the pro uh, on the project with you, and you'll need to uh, to ask those questions when you're assigned an invalidity analysis. Um, good. So um, that's the 102A introductory uh, discussion, and um, we'll go into it more detail in the course in the uh, in the assigned reading and the questions. Um, and I uh, look forward to discussing this with you in class also. Thanks.